Welcome to Legends, a series that delves into the lore within Horizon Forbidden West. As Aloy ventured into the ruins of Los Angeles in the Burning Shores DLC, we were introduced to several new additions to Horizon's machine ecosystem. These three represent some of the most unique creations we've seen to date, traversing land, air, and sea. When it comes to these new machines, it remains unclear if they were designed by the original Gaia to aid in the terraforming goals of Project Zero Dawn, or later by its former subfunction Hephaestus. All three belong to the Acquisition class, which might suggest to some that these were not designed as hunter killers. This could be the case, but it's important to remember that Hephaestus has not exclusively designed combat class machines post Extinction Signal as both the Fearsome Frost and Fireclaw also belong to the Acquisition class. One piece of evidence that might point to these machines being designed by Gaia can be found within the data point A Plague of Frogs. Here, Walter Londra expresses that he finds Sobek's machines to be tiresome, but does admit that the big froggy ones manifested some useful behavior towards his goals at the time. Could this be hinting towards these three being some of Gaia's initial designs? Maybe. Or it could simply be a generalization made by someone without a total understanding of ZD systems. Regardless of their origins and classification, each of these machines bring their own distinct capabilities, making them formidable enemies or allies. First, let's turn our focus to the Water Wing, a truly remarkable machine, a first to master both sky and sea a medium-sized, highly maneuverable flyer that can dive beneath the waves as well. Unlike the Sun Wing that utilized photovoltaic technology, the wings of its counterpart have been modified to be effective for water traversal as well. In addition, its beak is made more rounded, akin to a pelican, to aid in its intended function of soil storage. This soil is then processed and distributed to the machine's wing filters. Once this has taken place, the soil is sowed into bodies of water to produce algal blooms, fostering a food base for many aquatic organisms along with creating oxygen through photosynthesis. A function, if an original terraformer, that could have been instrumental to both the goals of the Demeter and Poseidon subfunctions. But when provoked, this sower of life can quickly turn into an unrelenting foe. Using a combination of dirt-based attacks, dives, and claws, it can prove to be a difficult hunt even alone. Nimble in almost every way, if you find yourself facing down a group of water wings, things can get out of hand rather quickly. These abilities that make it so formidable can also become one of Aloy's greatest boons. Throughout her time in the Burning Shores, the water wing has proven its worth time and time again, allowing Aloy to overcome Zenith technology, traverse inhospitable landscapes, and provide aerial aid in her battle with an awakened Horus. Whether fighting or flying, I think we can all agree that the Water Wing is more than a valuable asset, and a fearsome enemy that demands your respect. The next two we encountered in the DLC are truly unique among the machines we've seen to date, defined by a symbiotic relationship unlike anything in the 31st century the Bile Gut, and Sting Spawn. Leaping with powerful legs, the toad-like Bile Gut uses acid to uncover stores of valuable scrap left by the old ones. But unlike its contemporaries with scavenging capabilities, this heavyweight doesn't collect these resources directly. Instead, from its egg launchers, it deploys clusters of storage containers in the surrounding area. From within, Sting Spawn are released. These insect-inspired lightweight creations travel in small swarms, retrieving anything of worth. The delivery system to get what's gathered back to the bile gut is quite interesting to say the least. Much like in nature, using its massive metal tongue, the bile gut snatches hovering sting spawn, collecting and recycling technological components, while breaking down its partner machines to create more. And the cycle continues. This entire process is precedent-setting among Zero Dawn-affiliated machines, as it represents the first time we've witnessed the ability of machine production outside of Cauldron facilities. Though this pales in comparison to what we've witnessed from the likes of a Horus-class Titan, 
The fact that any machine that contributes to ZD systems has the ability to produce machines is fascinating, given the ramifications such technology had in the 21st century. As far as combat capabilities are concerned, where sting spawn are more of a nuisance, engineered to eventually be destroyed, the bile gut has proven to be incredibly mobile for its size and firepower. Equipped with metal bite and adhesive, these elements can be sprayed from nearly all sides of the machine while it uses its size and strength to slam and strike you from close range. So if you find yourself in this region, just be sure to never underestimate this enemy, or you may find yourself crushed beneath its massive body slam. Much like the Frozen Wilds, these new additions to the catalog have redefined what we know the Machines of Horizon to be capable of. Will we see more of these three in Aloy's continued journey, or will they go the way of the Trampler and Strider? Maybe we'll see them modified further, thanks to Hephaestus' brush with Zenith technology. But no matter what's in store, be sure to keep one eye open while adventuring through the burning shores for water wings, sting spawn, and bile guts. And that brings our journey to an end. If you'd like to see more content like this, likes and shares are always appreciated. And if you're hungry for more Horizon lore, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of our lore library. Also check out our Discord community and our membership program for exclusive content on the lore of Horizon. And as always, thanks for watching and keep questing.